visit arcademodup.com. In this video today, we're going to show you new Arcade Legends Ultimate Digital Marquee Mount. Uh, it includes the bracket, the mounting hardware, and the plex. You can also select from the default artwork or customize your own. This is just the bracket, but we'll have a link in the description for the actual LCD screen uh, that you'll use with this to create your digital marquee. In this video, we'll show how to install and configure everything, as well as our Raspberry Pi build and our Corn Apps build if, if you just want to get something that just works out of the box without having to program it yourself. So let's get started. Okay, so we'll start with the monitor mount here. Uh, you can see it's going to come with the bolts to bolt the monitor to the uh, to the bracket here. Also comes with the screws. It'll screw the bracket into your Arcade Legends cap. Cabinet. There is a uh, piece of plex. It'll obviously go on top. It'll come in double-sided brown paper, so you'll peel that off on both sides. I went ahead and peeled off one side so you guys could see it. Uh, just to show the back here. So you can see there's already the mount holes ready to go for the monitor. And then, of course, the holes that'll go through for the um, uh, to mount it to the cabinet. So let's go ahead and put a monitor in there, and uh, we'll talk through that. Okay, so again, there's a link in the description on where to get one of these monitors uh, on Amazon. The first thing you'll do is this comes with like a protective case on it or a little paper. So pull that off. I'm um, just show you guys how to connect this up. So there'll be a power connector. It should already be connected to the little LCD uh, board here. But you do the white right there and then the red in here. That's where your power is going to come from. And then you'll have your adapter cable here. And then where this is going to plug is on. So here's the HDMI up front, right? So here's this back plug right there. It's going to go with the red all the way at the front corner. So you won't actually cover all of the uh, pegs there. You'll just cover that. So that's how that hooks up. You can see the holes are already in it. So as we set this with the bulk is the top of the monitor. So I'll have to peel that off the front. Just show you guys. That's just going to sit in there perfect like that. And then I'm going to use the bolts and these nuts uh, to put that on. So I'll go and do that now and show you. So I went ahead and peeled the paper off the plex and set the plex. Oh, you guys can see that there. Set the plex on top. So I'll put the bolts through the plex. Um, and then through the monitor and put the nuts on. Okay, so you can see I got those four uh, four nuts on the back um, of those bolts right there. So you can see everything fits exactly how it should. I'll show you guys the front. You'll get a little glare off the plex, but you can see how nice and just seamless that looks. So let's go ahead and install it in the cap. Okay, so this is pretty easy. You just take the six screws out uh, that come. There's three on the top, three on the bottom. Take those out, pull this front off. It's just a piece of plex. It is glued down a little bit, so you got to put a little force on it for it to come out, but it comes out fairly easily. So I'll go ahead and take those out and take it off and show you. Okay, just so you guys, you can see that the, the screws are out. Um, so I need to do now is just kind of pull it and it'll come off. You can see it pulled a little wood off. There's just a little bit of glue they put around there. So uh, that's going to work perfect for what we need. Okay, so this is obviously pretty simple. I'm just going to take the components, we'll get the, to those in the back, drop them in there, uh, put this into place. So you can see it's a nice tight fit right there. Take my screws. I'll start with these two top screws just to make sure that they go through. You can kind of open it just a little at the top and look and make sure you're lined up with their previous screws there. Uh, but you can see it's tight enough that I don't really even have to do that. But um, So I'll go ahead and just put those in there. I could already feel that that dropped where it was supposed to. Just make sure it's lined up. It should, it'll line up perfect once you do. And I'll screw those in and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so you can see we're all mounted up. So that's really it for the mount. Um, we're all good. I'm going to go ahead and turn it around and connect up and show you guys how I get um, either our Raspberry Pis hooked up to it or our coin ops image where everything will just work out of the box for you. Okay, so turn it around on the back. I'm going to go ahead and undo these six screws here. Um, I went ahead and didn't put the, the slots in here so there's plenty of room for you guys to see everything I'm doing. But I'm just going to take those six out. When you are, be careful. This is connected up, just, uh, connected up to these connections here. Make sure that they're supported so that way you just don't pull them out. So as you pull this out, this will actually just pop out. The little LAN connector will just pop out on the other side. Um, and just be aware of the other ones. So I'm actually going to turn this so that way there's, there's some slack uh, for those wires. So I'll undo those and um, take that off take, and we'll look at that. So when I took it off, I'm just holding it right now so you guys can see. But you can see how that cord will just pop out right there. And then I'm just going to set that where it's up like that so that way uh, there's a little bit of slack in the cable right there. It doesn't pull too hard on the two um, power connectors that are there because you'll still need those. Okay, so let's show this off real quick. So you can see that my monitor is mounted in there. Um, it's running to the, to the little controller here. So my power, this is going to be my 12 volt power plug right there. And then my HDMI plug for my second monitor. Something that's really important here is for using a Raspberry Pi, I was using a one amp 12 volt here. It would not recognize most monitors. So you have to use at least a three amp 
one or three amp 12 volt power supply once i plugged that in i didn't have any issues okay so let's talk through our raspberry pi mod kit here so it'll come with the raspberry pi 4 it comes pre-configured with your um uh, with your 128 gig card so that'll go in right there uh, facing just like that on the other side here's your power plug on the end it will come with the power so you'll plug that in um, there's two hdmi ports here so hdmi 0 and hdmi 1 so that's right next to power zero and one for zero here you'll run the hdmi cable around and plug it into your arcade legends here um, you also if you don't want it there you can also take the little screws out of here and take this box off and plug it in back here uh, so that way you know you wouldn't have the cable running around but for this that's how we'll show it um, there so now for the hdmi one that's just going to run up and run into your secondary lcd monitor there so that's just hdmi into there and then again a three amp 12 volt power plug there um, the next thing you're going to do is the usb plug right here for your control panel i just unplugged that it's just a standard usb and i plugged it into the um, usb 2.0 right there at the top so that's it it's super simple we've done all the work for you uh, both monitors get recognized both monitors will play so i'm going to go ahead and just turn this around where you guys can see it and go ahead and just plug in my um, pi everything else is powered up uh, so let's do that now okay so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and just right here there's this channel button switch that to where it goes to hdmi after a few seconds you will see it say uh, that it's waiting for input and then i'm just going to plug in the raspberry pi so now i will do that and you'll see both of them light up okay so i just added the power plug in there uh, make sure those hdmi cables are plugged all the way in um, if you don't get a signal on one of them it's more than likely you don't have that little micro hdmi plugged in so you can see both of them will um, start this is based off a of virtual man image um, and then i made quite a few changes to it uh, to accommodate for this how it needs to all the controls are all configured and um, all the marquees and that kind of thing um, i updated the marquee sizing there's quite a few changes here so you don't need to know how to download torrent files and flash that and then configure RetroArch or configure Pi Marquee 2. It's all done for you, so it, it makes it super simple here. As you can see there, it's activating marquees, so it says. This will do a different intro. There's a lot of different intros that it'll do. Um, you can change that default jpeg up top if you want to but that's a really good looking one this also will change every time you reboot it there's a whole bunch of really cool interfaces it'll work the exact same way so you'll still go to arcade classics or or uh whatever you want to play but this can look a lot different in fact this is going to be my start button so if i press start i can go down to ui settings um and then this will be b and a it's actually the other way b a r y x l that's how it is on the uh, retro pi software so I'm just going to hit this middle button here to go in and then I can go down to theme set and there's a bunch of them installed, but again, it's going to randomly do these so I can, um, it doesn't matter if you select any of them, they all are awesome. Uh, so it just kind of makes your arcade constantly look like it's updated. So we'll go ahead and just do maybe this back to the future at the top. So I'll go back. It'll load it up. It'll take a second. So you can see there it's all the same it works the exact same way it's just the interface is all changed when you do it um, so let's go ahead and go into arcade classics here and as we um, get down to a game so we'll just boot something here so 1942 i'll boot that and then this will do two things once it boots into the game here it'll tell you what the publisher is so in this case capcom and then there's the 1942 updates as well. Um, so this is my coin button, player one, player two, and my exit is the green button here. So I can add my money, hit player one start. And you can see I got full control over everything. Oh, I died because I'm only using one hand here, but you guys can see how I'm shooting there and moving around. So to exit out, I'll exit out like that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the hotkey mode. So I'll hold that down and press start. So that's like hitting select start. 
So this is your hotkey button. Uh, on CoinOps, I have it where you just press that and it comes out, but you gotta have a combo key for Raspberry Pi. So again, you'll hold that down and press player one. So hold the green button, press player one to exit out of games. Um, this is page up and page down right here. So I could just keep paging down if I wanted to. Um, this is forward and this is back. So I could just go back just to kind of show you. It's the last played, your favorites list, all games, and then it's broken out. So your trackball games, for instance, we could go under there and go down. There's a bunch of these. Um, doesn't really matter. Let's just pick one. So we'll pick golden T. I'll go forward to select it. As you can see there, highlighted the, um, the marquees there. Tells me to press start, so I'll press start. We'll add my money, that's my coin. And then you can see my, my truck ball's working good. Oops, press start. Pick my course, all of that. So you can see here, as I come back, then he'll hit some good shape there. So mode exit, it'll exit out. Goes back to my nice retro paid uh, marquee there. So I can back. Let's go into the Street Fighters just to show that. Um, doesn't really matter. This is one I played as a kid. So we'll, it's got all the previews as well. So we'll back out. It will again update the marquee dynamically. So this is another Capcom game. Uh, it does all the bezels, so that way you're playing the game at the right resolution you're supposed to, and then it has a game bezel going around it um, to fill the screen. So again, so my player one start. Here's my player two start. So you can see there I got full. Uh, I'm able to use everything that I need. So back out of there. And that's pretty much it. So again, this will look different every time you boot it up. It's set to random, so it'll look really cool. There's tons of different ways it dices up all the arcade games. There's tons of games on here again, and the uh, accompanying marquees. It's all ready to go. You don't have to do anything. Just plug it up. It just takes a few minutes, as you guys saw, and you will uh, unlock everything without having to hit, you know, their Wi-Fi and paying for their service fees and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just ready to go here. So we will show the coin ops build next. Okay, so let's talk about running this off a computer instead of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, running our CoinOps build is just going to come on a USB key. Uh, just to show you how I have this hooked up. So I have my PC underneath. I'm running the two monitors. So running up into my digital marquee there uh, through HDMI. And then I have my HDMI plugged in right there. Of course, again, you could take this box down right there and plug it in back here if you wanted to. Uh, the other thing I had to do is, again... The USB that's plugged in here that's coming from the control panel, that's just running down and into my PC, as you guys can see right there. So I will go ahead and add the USB key. So I'm going to go to my display settings, and I have both monitors, so I can hit identify. This is monitor one, that's monitor two. Um, I have monitor two on the right side of monitor one. I have changed both of them to 1920 by 1080 so select that select the other monitor make sure they're both set to that and then the final thing is make sure you have this uh, first mark or this first LCD selected and then go down and make sure that this box is checked to make it your main display and hit uh, and hit okay so on the USB key you'll just go into the main root file we added some advanced configs that I'll go over either later in this video or in another video uh, that'll help make sure that everything stays how you need it for for this uh, arcade legends cabinet but basically, you'll just go in and hit the coinops.exe. Just double click that, and everything will boot up. So you can see there my digital marquee is working. Um, it booted right in. This is my start key right there. So I can press that. It'll boot in the system. You can see it's on the settings here. So I go through the settings. Uh, so settings on the down. If I push down, that'll go to all of the uh, different systems here. Kind of go through and just show you guys uh, these real quick. So any of these I go into again, player one is your enter. 
that'll go into the system themselves. If I'm going to go to the next system, I'll just push over and it'll keep going over. So inner will get you in and over will get you back out uh, to select. So we'll go ahead and I'll just go to the main arcade here. Press one. And then as I go down, you'll see that the marquee will dynamically update as you go through. So just to show a couple, uh, a couple other things here, you'll see that set to all right there. There's all favorites and last. So this will switch my playlist right here, this middle button. So if I go over to my favorites, I just have three on here that I wanted to show you guys. So we'll go into Street Fighter first. So I'll just press play, which is my player one. As you can see there, my marquee updated. It will launch the game. Everything will have bezels. So that way it'll play at the proper resolution that it's supposed to. Uh, and then bezels customized to that game will fill the screen. As you can see here, this is gonna be my coin button. So I can add some money, player one, my player two button. So you can see everything's uh, working how it's supposed to here. So just to show you my punches and kicks. Everything's all configured properly for both players. So if I want to exit, all I have to do is press the green button. So I'll press the green button, it comes back out. Um, pick a different game here, so like Arkanoid. So again, you can see that it changed. We will go into that. And again, you can see how it does the bezel, so everything fits nice and neat. This game takes a second to boot. Um, so once I'm in, again, add my money. Player one. So I just want to show you guys the spinners working. Uh, that's why I chose this game. So once it's in, you'll see that I have control of the spinner as expected for the spinner games. Uh, green button will get me out. And then again, I'm in the favorite, so I could come over, go to last games played, go back to my all list. Uh, this will add a favorite, that'll remove a favorite on how this is set up. So I could just hold down, just kind of give you guys an idea. Here, just, it just goes on forever, right? And everything has backgrounds. So again, let's so just keep going down. I'll go down to Golden Tea Game just to show the uh, trackball here. I hit a random game there. That's random, that top middle game, so you can see it went to punch out. Um, and then this will be previous letter, that's next letter. So you can see here that I will go up to H. Right there. So then I can be a little closer to some golden tea games here, so you can see. There's a few of them. We'll just pick one. So you can see there again, it updated the marquee. Booted the game with the bezel. Player start. I'll add some money. And you guys can see here that that's working. So here we go. See, I hit it. So that's it. I mean, uh, it's all tweaked out, ready to go. Again, there's a lot of bat files that we made. If something, if you mess something up by accident or whatever, it's usually just going in and hitting a double click on something uh, to get what you need. I did load Daphne on this as well. So for your, uh, you know, your Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair 2, Space Ace, those type games, those are all set up and working as well. The green button will just exit me out. And that is our coin ops build for the Arcade Legends integrating our uh, our marquee, digital marquee up top. So make sure and like the video. 
visit arcademodup.com.